Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Anthony, and this is the moderator for the evening, Chef Dwayne Nutter, chef owner in, of Southern National Restaurant, and James Beard, semi-finalist for his restaurant in the Atlanta airport, One Flew South. Right, yes, that is definitely a round of applause. And our first chef is Chef Reesens, an Indonesian chef who has one of the first micro-enterprise home kitchen operations in San Diego. <laughs> and she will be making an Indonesian peanut sauce. Chef? Thank you. Well, Chef, what do we have? Yeah. So thank you for coming, everybody. I'm Chef Sims. Now I'm going to demonstrate uh, making of traditional Indonesian peanut sauce. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, peanut sauce is like a staple for us beside the hot sauce that we make. So we use it a lot in any other kind of dish. We can use it for the satay skewer. We can use it for the uh, salad. We call it gado-gado, which is a mixed salad. And then we can also even use it for the dumplings. So now uh, my kind of cooking is always, I mix traditional way of cooking and modern style of cooking. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to make a peanut sauce from Indonesia. However, I like to use my traditional mortar and pestle <laughs> that, you know, uh, I grind the peanut uh, to make it the uh, texture like grinding and nuttiness of the peanut even better for my type of cooking is just because I think when you use it, of course everybody can use the modern technique like a like a, a roboku or a blender. But however, I found with just traditional way like this, it will give more authentic of the flavor of Indonesia. So the very first thing uh, that we do, of course, uh, we have to. Um, boil the, I mean, uh, deep fry the peanut first because we can get from the raw peanut. We get um, raw peanut, uh, boil it, I mean, deep fry it in um, oil. And then this is an uh, example that I already did, uh, you know, before. And then uh, to use the peanut when after it's grind, we have to use sort of water. However, I found out when we make uh, when we make the liquid uh, hot water, it's easier to to do so to break apart the peanut instead of just using a cold water. And in the water that I'm boiling right now, um, I'm gonna put another ingredients to mix with uh, the peanut. So very first thing you do, um, this is a tamarind uh, paste. Oops. I'm nervous, so. <laughs> well, we'll take your time. We're not going anywhere. And then uh, Indonesia also use a lot of palm sugar. This is a palm sugar. Uh, my type of cooking, I never measure like everything have to be precisely. I feel in a way that when you do everything in taste, because um, my, my dad, I learned how to cook from my dad. My dad always say, when somebody give you food, it means they give you their heart. So by doing just to taste, I feel like you full, you put your love into it, you know. So and this is also the same thing. If you don't have any palm sugar, um, we can use a brown sugar. It doesn't matter what kind of sugar you use, but mostly uh, Indonesian uh, cuisine they like to use uh, brown sugar or palm sugar. So it's just to make uh, the sweetness uh, on on the um, water for liquid of the peanut. And then this is a kaffir lime. Indonesian uh, cuisine also use a lot of kaffir lime. And this kaffir lime is actually planted in our backyard. So we have Indonesian tradition restaurant called Warung Riri. So um, we plant mostly of 80% of the herbs and ingredients that I use in my restaurant in our backyard. One of them, is the kaffir lime. So you can put kaffir lime um, 
live over there. Uh, this time of year, I don't have much uh, cover lime fruit uh, or the lime, so I use the the leaf instead. And then um, you know, just uh, make sure everything are kind of liquefied, and then that gonna be ready to go. So. Then now the fun part, okay? <laughs> so this is the peanut that I got from our. Um, you got from the National Peanut Board. Yes. So and they sent us to me yesterday. Oh, so I, okay. I, I deep fry it and then I, you know, there's nothing wrong again with with the cooking. You can you can do it in bigger scale, of course, with the blender. But then this time I'm just gonna make it for one serving in a way. So yeah, uh, put the peanut. This is a salt, and then do your work. <laughs> uh, and for you guys that might be wondering, that's, there's four types of peanuts, and that is a that's a Valencia peanut and a Spanish peanut. Yeah, you do the work, do the love in here. Hopefully, it's not a California earthquake on the table right now. <laughs> we. Um, so you can see even the texture of the peanut is starting to be grind like not as a smooth like a peanut butter. It's more likely more green to texture of like nuttiness of the peanut itself. Good mouthfeel as well. Yes. <laughs> and then... Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with uh, any style that you are doing. And some people, they do like to put the spinach back to the pot, but I like to put the liquid in, the, in here instead, so I'm doing vice versa. If you like spicy, you can add uh, Thai chili, or if you like some of type, another type of uh, salad that they do in Indonesia, they call it ketoprak. They even use a raw garlic and then adding in here. So there's nothing, nothing wrong with, you know, uh, making a peanut sauce, of course. But uh, like I say, my type of cooking, I like mix traditional way and modern way. So this is kind of like, you can see pretty much grind already. And then, oh, pause. And then we can just pour slowly the hot water. So the kaffir lime and then the tamarind and also the uh, palm sugar, it gives you the lemony flavor, it gives you the sweetness. Um, so it's a mix of burst of flavor of the, the, the star, which is the peanut as well. So yeah, and then uh, you want to, the texture usually kind of like uh, more, not like so liquefied. It's more like uh, consistent of uh, thickness. And then also another that Indonesian staple cuisine that they like to use, they add sweet soy sauce. So pretty much that's, that's it, like that. And then again, if you want to make it more liquefied, you can, but usually they just kind of like that. And then this is a sweet soy sauce. You can find anywhere around the uh, Asian store. And then, yeah, just that. And there you go. We have Indonesian peanut sauce. That's it. That's really lovely. <laughs> And tomorrow, on the lunch, I'm going to use this peanut sauce with the Becker's bacon. You guys have so, any yeah. questions about this sauce? Yes. No. Um, Indonesian um, cuisine, they not like Thai cuisine that use a lot of fish sauce. We, we use, it's just because Indonesia have 17,000 island and we have more than 7,000 cuisine. And every island, they have their own staples of flavor. So if you go to Sumatra, it's more spicy. If you go to Java, they use more sweet soy instead of the fish sauce. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? 
Yes. Yeah, so la, uh, water and then tamarind, tamarind, uh, lime leaf or coffee lime, market lime, uh, lime, everybody na name it different way, and then uh, sugar, yes, palm sugar or brown sugar if you don't have palm sugar. What are some of your favorite things to put this on? Uh, everything. Oh. <laughs> like I said, they, we can use it for the for the salad. We can use it for the satay, chicken, skewer. We can use it even for dumpling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I tend to use more of the uh, sweet soy sauce. It's just because I like sweetness instead of... Uh, yeah, I like spicy and sweet, but I feel like when I'm adding more, the color, of course, will oh, be yeah. different. Yeah, just because I have a short time to, to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. But... Remember, tomorrow I'll be in the lunch, so find me. <laughs> so you can try my peanut sauce. <laughs> Give it up for her, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Chef. Thank sure. you so much. Yes. So we're going to continue the exploration of peanut sauces, sauces around the world, uh, presented by the Southern Peanut Growers with uh, Chef Tolu. Chef Tolu? You want to make your way out here? Yes. Chef Tolu Eros from Nigeria. He will be making a Nigerian peanut sauce. Yes. Sounds fire. Are you mic'd, Chef? I think I am. I definitely am mic'd. Well, Hi, guys. I'm excited this. to be here today. Um, we're going to get set up quickly. Shouldn't take too long. People no, try to wonder why I'm long. just walking around with a microphone. Plugged in. Is that blender plugged in? I don't think so. Maybe you want to use that chef? Yeah, I'll probably bring it forward here. Chef, is this yours? Yes. Well, while they get a little set up, I'll talk a little bit about the sustainability of our lovely little peanut and uh, what's it all about. And the four different varieties. How many people know that there was four different types of peanuts? Just two people? Wow, a misunderstood plant. Well, it's a lot more sustainable than people might think. It has a really thick uh, root, and it, it really holds on to water for a very long time. And it also introduces a lot of nitrogen back into the soil. So it's one of those rotation crops that uh, people like to use. Uh, some cattle industry, when they grow their own hay, they would actually rotate the hay growing for the food, for the feed, and introduce more nitrogen in the soil for the next crop. So it's one of those uh, cute little situations with the peanut. Do you really, do you need your blender? I do need my blender. <laughs> okay. How's everyone doing today? All right, so I'll, I'll go again with my name. It's Tolu Eros. Tolu Lokpe Erogbogbo. I'm from Nigeria, which is in the west of Africa. Um, I've been in the culinary industry for about 15 years. Um, I started at the age of 21 officially with a restaurant, probably the dumbest thing a 21-year-old could do. Um, as you would expect, the restaurant failed, but it was a huge part of my learning process. Um, I started up cooking uh, French, um, and then I went worldly, and then decided that I wanted to do what my heart really wanted to eat, which was Nigerian food. And so after a couple of years, I uh, opened a number of projects, restaurants, a bakery, um, a catering business, and I decided that I wanted to use uh, food as a medium of communication to tell the story of our culture. Um, I'm a mix of Yoruba, which is from the West, um, Edo and Calabar, and that's in the South. Um, but today, uh, since we're talking peanuts, um, I thought I would show you guys a really interesting peanut sauce that comes from the north of Nigeria. Um, the northerners are known for using peanuts a lot in making sweets, um, in making a spice called yaji. Uh, yaji is a mix of garlic and ginger, uh, chilies, salt, and peanuts um, that is used to season meats called suya. But today, I am making um, a peanut sauce called uh, Dambuna, um, called Miangeda. Miangeda, Miang is sauce, 
and Geda is peanuts. And um, I'm starting this off with uh, some palm oil, a nice good amount of palm oil to be able to uh, saute and sweat some onions. Um, I'm going to be serving the, the sauce today with um, some plantains and uh, roasted cauliflower. And I'm going to finish it up uh, with uh, honey roasted peanuts that I've also tossed in that yaji spice I spoke about earlier. So whilst this uh, oil is coming to heat, I'm going to test it real quick and see how we are. Turn that up a little bit, and I'm going to hit it with some onions. That was what I was expecting, but hey. I think the, the hood system is just turned on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man, that captive air unit. Yeah, it was a little, the smoke was deceiving, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Quite. But we'll get there at some point. Well, there we go, Chef. I'll, I'll fill in All a little right. time for you. Tell me what's in the spice right here. All right. So the, the spice is a mix of uh, chilies, ground dry chilies, uh, garlic, ginger, salt, and peanuts. Now, not just any kind of peanuts, but there are these uh, peanuts that have been uh, blended with some ginger, uh, sometimes sweetened with sugar, and then fried in its own oil into a snack called uh, kuli kuli. Now that snack is then ground and added into that mix of spices. Ooh, that's delicious. Mm -hmm. I'll be calling for the recipe on that one. All right, so now that our onions are sweating a little bit, I'm just gonna hit that with a little salt. We are missing our key ingredient, the peanut butter. Oh, <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. Do they have it in the back? That really smells good. Mm -hmm. All righty. Now I'm going to hit that with um, some ginger. I just have ginger that has been blended. color on those onions, Chef? Mm -hmm. yeah? Getting a nice color on the onions. And then uh, habanero. We like a little bit of heat, right? Um, and then we're also going to add in some bell peppers. So bell peppers will go in. And then just a little bit of habanero. Not too much, because we want to be able to enjoy this. All righty. Key ingredient. That Sure. It's called. Thank you. Uh, it's called dawa dawa iru. Uh, English name is locust beans. It's a fermented bean that really adds an umami to a lot of uh, Western African cooking. It stinks, but it tastes delicious. So, a healthy amount goes in there. 
and uh, crayfish powder. Um, also used a lot in uh, traditional Nigerian cooking as a spice. Add flavor in there. Some tomato paste. And then I'm using a vegetable stock base. You can use chicken bouillon if you want. Um, but this really just helps with building that flavor a little more. And now we're just going to bring all of this together and let it render. Oh. Smells good? Yeah, you're getting that fermented fish thing going mm -hmm. from the bean and the shells. Crawfish. That would explain a lot in my family. We use uh, dried shrimp a lot in Louisiana. I was born in a little small town called Morgan City. But uh, I've never been to Nigeria and I'm smelling what I'm smelling and it's, it's taking me home. <laughs> Must be some DNA cooking going on. All right. I'm gonna give that a quick taste. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Mm. I guess while we're waiting for this to saute, I can take some questions if there are any. Anybody have any questions? Yes. <laughs> I was about to ask that question. Say that again? He said, where can he find some crawfish powder? Um, you can find them on Amazon, actually. Um, a lot of the spices that we use back home um, I found on Amazon. There are local African stores in every city across America, and you can get pretty much any produce from there. Same with palm oil. You can buy it online or um, go into a local African produce store. Yeah, in uh, Atlanta, we have the DeKalb Farmer's Market, and you can get a lot of palm oil. Right there in the back. Oh. Well, it comes from the palm kernel, mm -hmm. and that's red in itself. So it's a red oil, yes. and it has a very distinct flavor. Yes, sir. Is it a specific dried chili blend he was asking? Uh, yes, it's called, I mean, we call it shombo, which is a thin chili um, that's typically dried and um, blended into a powder form. Yes, sir. Hmm. How do I explain that taste? Maybe you want to smell it. It smells like it, it, it adds, so it's almost like a saltiness in itself, right? Um, um, it's, it's definitely very heavy. Yes. You want to try it? You want to smell it? It's kind of, have you ever had a fermented black bean? It's like that kicked up a notch. Yeah. Lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. All right, and now peanut butter goes in. But yet milder than the fermented black bean. Ooh. And then we're going to loosen that up with some vegetable stock. Some of the applications for this sauce. Uh, so, the Northerners will eat it with rice that they call tsuo, right? It's, the rice is cooked until it's really, really soft and mashy and it can almost be eaten with a swallow, um, like a swallow. Um, you can also have, eat this with 
uh, we, we eat a lot of starches, right? Like uh, pounded yam, uh, cassava that's been ground, so you can eat it with that. Um, you can have it with rice as well. Traditionally, back home, there will be a lot of meats going on. So we would boil a, a mix of, of meats, uh, beef, uh, tripe, and make a stock. And that stock is what will be used in, in cooking the soup as well. Um, oh. I decided to go more vegetable-based with this one. And that's it. That's real coming together. Mm-hmm. So you can see it's pretty easy to make. Um, it doesn't take that long either. And it's pretty much ready. Now we're just going to blend this into a smooth paste. You don't have to. You can have it with all the onions and little chunks of chilies in there, especially if you're going to be having it with some rice. But today I'm going to be serving it over some plantains and cauliflower. As a result, um, I want this into a nice paste uh, that I can pour over that plantain and make it nice and beautiful. Okay, just going to rest this over here and take that. Uh, pause. Drum roll, please. Oh, here we go. Man. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. A little kitchen help never mm -hmm. hurt nobody. All right. There you go. I don't want to mess up my outfit. <laughs> That part. <laughs> Got to stay fly. All righty. Okay. All right. That's it. Now we put our lid on. All right. Motor boat. Let's go. This might be good with a strong fish, too, huh? Mm hmm. Those are plantains. That one instead. And that's our beautiful sauce. Can also be a dipping sauce. Some oh. chips. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> All right, right let's lead up. To go so, some grilled plantains. That we're going to be able to eat this later on. So at 6 o'clock, I'll be outside serving some of this. All right. So you get to eat, you get to taste it and enjoy it. So grilled plantains, fried plantains, whichever you like. I grilled these ones. Some cauliflower goes on there as well. Just a little more cauliflower. And then I'm just going to spoon some of the sauce. I don't know if you guys can see me, so I'm just going to move some of this out of your way. I don't know, if you're in the front row, can you guys smell that? Yeah. <laughs> That's that. We do have uh, peanuts. I'm going to put some of that honey roasted uh, spicy nuts. So it's the dambunama, um, the suya pepper has been roasted and put on top of that. So I'm adding a little bit of that just on top. It's going to give it some crunch. going to render some nice sweetness to the dish as well and just beautify this plate with some flowers. And there we go. As easy as one, two, three. As easy as one. As long as two. you have an Amazon account. <laughs> <laughs> Prime, yes. You make sure you get the spellings right so you get the right thing shipped to you. All right. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Me and Gida, grilled plantains and cauliflower. That's Thank beautiful, you. chef. I didn't think I was coming to class. I was supposed to be doing class. <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. We got the next P. 
peanut iteration. Oh, okay. Do I take this back? We will just uh, reset here for a second. So, uh, right. wow, that's, that smelled amazing, didn't it? Both of those sauces look really good, and okay. I will have to implement them in my cooking. Um, I like to make a lot of sauces, try to keep it global, you know? And uh, all, both of those look amazing and smell amazing. A little louder, a little louder. Beautiful. I don't want to yell. Do you want me to yell at you? We're not in the kitchen right now. Mm -hmm. We're at the anti-convention. Okay, so Chef Jose Cepeda from uh, Puebla, Mexico. Uh, he will be There's making a peanut-based mole and my favorite salsa, salsa matcha. I put it on everything, dumplings, dim sum, like yeah. everything, salsa matcha. That's good. It's amazing. Me, Chef? Me, the soup is called Miyagi Oh, like the, oh the, yes. The, what he's just said. There we go. Getting there ready there? Getting ready. So we're going to Mexico today? Or yep. What part? Puebla. Oh. Yeah. Cool. I'm actually from Tehuacan, Puebla, which is like south uh, east of, uh, the, of the state of Puebla. Okay. I'm like four hours from Mexico City. Yeah. All righty. So today we're going to make a salsa matcha, which uh, I'm using right now at the restaurant where I'm working at. I'm the executive chef at Quixote, at the new uh, renewed Lafayette. So we're using it for our uh, shrimp tacos. And I'm gonna show you how we make our uh, salsa matcha, which is like really easy. You just need like to have everything ready and fry everything practically and blend them. This uh, salsa matcha, it's based on uh, a lot of uh, seeds and nuts. Um, I'm going to put to heat my oil, just a uh, vegetable oil, so that way um, we're going to be able to fry everything without to burn it. And I'm going to put it on a medium high. And practically we're going to fry everything. And then we're going to blend it, and that's going to be the risotto for salsa matcha. I'm going to make that one first. And then I'm going to start to make the pipián, which is a peanut-based mole. It's a really easy. Practically, we're going to use uh, pre-Hispanic techniques, which is like a tatemar and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you how, how to, to make them. So first, I'm preheating my, my, my oil. And I have like a bunch of chilies. I have uh, chile costeño. I have some um, chile guajillo. I have some uh, poblano, dry poblano, which is the, the pasilla. And I have some of the cascabel. If you don't know the cascabel, is like this little chili. Actually, it's called cascabel because it's like a cascabel. So. That's what, why we call it like that. Uh, it has a really spe special flavor. It's one of my favorite uh, chilies to cook with. Actually, here in the United States, are a little bit expensive. You can find it for, I don't know, five pounds for a hundred and something uh, dollars. But um, it, it has a really nice flavor, and I mean, it's one of my favorite ones. So we're gonna, I'm going to start to fry everything really quick. So we need to fry the chiles until they get, um, I mean, a little, a little bit crispy. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna puff. And then once they puff, you have to take them out because you don't want to get them burnt. If not, your salsa is gonna taste uh, burnt. So practically you, you, you fry all the chiles. I'm putting here the guajillo, and I'll put the costeño. The costeño is like the guajillo, uses a little bit smaller, and I mean, it, like, it's called costeño because actually it comes, like, from the coast of Mexico, like, it grows in um, tropical places, so that's why we call it costeño. And practically, you, you fried everything. 
it's like a chili oil. I mean, it's very similar like the Chinese Asian uh, chili oil. Let's see. And like for these recipes I, I have like certain amount I know how much to put like just uh, grab a, a little bit of this and that and I just heard my ancestor telling me stop there mijo because it's going to be spicy so. <laughs> and I believe in all that stuff so that's why. And I feel like cooking I mean my grandmother she teach me like everything she was my first uh, chef. I was like four years old when I started to like peel garlics and onions with hair. My parents they had a butchery. So they were always working and my grandmother took care of me. Um, we used to cook like the food for the employees. So I was like cooking food since I was four years old. So always Mexican food and I mean that's, that's what I wanted to do since that I, I knew that I wanted to be a chef. So. She teach me like all what I know now. After that I went to the culinary and everything and I learned new techniques. But I feel like everything you do, you have to do it with the heart, so. Common theme. Yeah. What exactly are you looking for when you're uh, getting done here? You're getting like puff like this, look. It's trying to puff up? Yeah. On the outside of the skin? Mm-hmm. You don't, want the, you, you don't want to get them burnt because like I told you it's yeah, gonna get like, moving. yeah. But the smell is great. Yeah. Right to the edge. I see you. That's how. I like this deep burgundy color. Yeah, it's gonna get like a really nice uh, red color. That's two hundred dollars right there. <laughs> <laughs> the sauce is gonna be hi. Say that again. Oh, <laughs> we got some volunteers. Oils up the temp. Yeah. So this is like this is a quick sauce. I I really recommend it with like um, everything. I like with a <laughs> shrimp and like uh, seafood. Actually, if you make this sauce, I mean, you can use it like for a lot of stuff. And this sauce can can become like an, an, an adobo if you blend it with some uh, consomme or some. Uh, uh, stock, you can make like a, a, a adobo and like add a pork or beef or whatever. So that's practically, it's very versatile. You can, um, I mean, use it for everything. I use a little bit of garlic, uh, ginger for this sauce. So I use fried a little bit of ginger here. I fried my, um, is that a traditional move or is that one of your no, special touches? No, uh, those are my special touches. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I like to fry the garlic until it, it gets a uh, golden brown. So it gives you like a special flavor. And then I have all these uh, peanuts and seeds already toasted. But the, well, I usually get them like toast them to make my life easier at the restaurant. But um, I always give them like a extra extra fry here like they already toasted so when I finish my, my salsa I just add everything here and they get like extra crispy so when you eat them it's like nice so you have the texture of the, the crispiness of the, the seeds so yeah. So I have the garlic here, the this one for me. Oh. I'm getting hungry. All right. 
going nuts over here. <laughs> so your your ancestors approve you doing that ginger? Yeah, they yeah. approve them. Yeah, pro probably probably I have some Asian over there in my. Okay. In my so I'm just checking. I huh? mean, I mean, we are. F I'm, I I I I always say that I'm from the world. So there you go. That's what I'm looking for. That's my move. So nice. I'm gonna add some uh, uh, pepitas, some uh, toasted. Uh, Pumpkin seeds, I'm adding my um, sesame seeds and the peanuts over here to the this. Those peanuts. Man. I like how we said, what do you think it goes with? And you said everything. With everything. This is like. So I'm giving him, giving him a little bit of uh, extra crispiness. And once I, I get where I want to be, I'm just going to blend everything. So my my um, my advice here is like be careful possibly you have be careful <laughs> and then you have to like blend first your chilies because if you blend everything you don't gonna be able to blend your chilies the right way so this is my trick blend first your chilies with the oil mm. and after that you add like everything so I have this here. Add a little bit of the oil here. Oh, right no, no, oh, just so. It's an oil, yeah. Just like at a regular restaurant. See that? Well, that happens. You know, something breaks or cooler goes down. That happens. Which washer wants to go swimming? I'm adding some oil here. Like this space over here, and then what I'm gonna do is gonna I'm gonna add like the pieces of ginger because those are like the biggest ones, the biggest uh, pieces right here. Yeah, that's it. And then that I have this blended, I like to have some texture like I told you before. So I'm just gonna blend this for like two, three seconds. And that's gonna be all. That's gonna be my salsa matcha. I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar and salt. And that's it. There you go. Yes. You might have any shrimp in their pocket or anything? Or <laughs> fish or something laying around? Or <laughs> steak or something? Yeah, whatever you want. Like. Anybody got a short rib or something we could. That sounds good, actually. That does sound good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Somebody cooking a leg of lamb back there. We can reuse this as a condiment. So I have my salsa here. I have this one already turned off because if not, I'm going to burn it. And 
What I'm going to do is also add some, a little bit of salt and a little bit of vinegar to give it a little bit of uh, acidity, which is going to help with the, um, with the oil because it's very greasy. So a little bit of kosher salt. Any particular kind of vinegar or just grab any Just acid? white vinegar. I mean, white vinegar. the other day I used actually a little bit of a, like a balsamic reduction. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Oh. Yeah. So if you want to go fancy, you can do that. I don't know about that. You have to talk to the ancestors yeah. before you go outside the lines. It's too far. Yeah. So this is the salsa matcha. You can add a, a little bit more oil here. And this is practically uh, for salsa matcha. This gets better with time. Like, if, for example, if you let it uh, rest for one week, it's going to get better and better and better. So, if you are planning to use it, I recommend to make it like one week, one week, two weeks before, and it's going to be better every time. Nice. So, this is like a really quick uh, salsa matcha. I have it here. And then I'm going to make really quick my PPM. Let me help you. Let me. I'll be like Vanna White. <laughs> oh, so let me use this one really quick here. All right, for the PPM, um, in Mexico we have about 350, a little bit more maybe, uh, moles, kinds of moles. Um, it's going to depend about the region, like in Mexico you can see, when you see a dish you can see where you at. You can see the geography, you can see the culture, you can see a, a lot. I mean, practically that's everywhere, but Mexico is like very, you can see all that kind of stuff. So for moles, mole in, in um, mix, uh, it means muli, which is uh, coming Nahuatl. Nahuatl is the Aztec's uh, language or, uh, yeah, the Aztec language. Um, when the Spaniards came to Mexico, they, uh, they added like this, uh, another techniques, another ingredients to, the, to our traditional mole. Uh, the mole was used just for like ceremonies and that kind of stuff. It was, I mean, still is like a big thing. When you die, you eat mole. When you, um, when you baptize somebody, you give mole. If you get married, you get, give mole. So mole, <laughs> mole is a big thing in Mexico. So what if there's a breakup mole? And there's about, a, like I told you, about the more than 300 and something kinds of mole. So for this one, it's going to be a really easy thing. I'm going to practically grill everything. I don't need to put uh, oil. That uh, technique is called tatemado, which is uh, use grill everything. So I'm going to put to grill some onions and some tomatoes and some garlic. Mm. So we're going to roast everything until it gets uh, really dark. It has to be like dark so it, it, it is going to give you like the smoky flavor that we're looking for. Uh, for this mole I'm using a little bit of guajillo, guajillo, guajillo chili which, which is going to be like um, practically giving the color and I'm going to make it a little bit spicy with uh, some chile de arbol. So practically I'm going to mix these ones. I'm going to let this uh, cook really quick. And I have already toasted peanuts here. So I'm going to add them to the blender. Some sesame seeds. And I have the spices that I'm going to use. It's going to be a little bit of cinnamon. a little bit of cinnamon and some uh, cloves. So I'm going to use like, use four because they're strong. A little bit goes a long way. And I have some um, 
some of uh, chicken stock. You can make it, uh, in, for example, you, when I make a moles at the restaurant, I always make them a vegan or vegetarian so that way people who is vegan can, can order them. But like my way, personally, when I cook at home, I always use a chicken broth or any kind of broth. And personally, I like to cook with pork lard. I feel like pork lard, I mean, some people is afraid of it, but this is not, uh, I mean, it's just pork lard, it's natural. It's not like, it didn't have a chemical process, so right. I, I, I personally prefer that. And I'm diabetic, so I, I'm trying like to get like better. Trying to eat more so I, Exactly, so. I understand that. And a lot of times you're just chasing a certain flavor. Exactly, yeah. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna blend all these ingredients here. I have my chicken stock here. So these uh, chiles were already toasted before to came here. So you have to toast them a little bit, like you, like I told you, you don't need to add uh, oil or nothing. Just toast them. You can put them in the oven for a couple of minutes, and that's gonna be all. I think the light. Uh -oh. I think the You're switch. Back. The BTUs is a little down. Oh, there you go. So I'm just letting this to get the color that I want to get them cooked. And I'm gonna blend, uh, blend everything together. And after that, I'm gonna use a sauteed sauce in a pot with a little bit of the pork lard. And practically, that's gonna be all. How long do you, do you let it simmer for a long time or anything? Or just, I, it's done? I like to let them change the color. So when it changes the color, like it gets a little bit of uh, Stronger. Mm -hmm. That's when it's ready. It's about to 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Get all the ingredients to get happy together. Kind of like, uh... So, what's your favorite thing to put this on? This one, I really like it on uh, pork ribs. Pork ribs. Yeah. Mm. Pork ribs. And a little bit of um, cilantro rice. That's good. Sign me up. Yep. What are you serving with it today? Uh, this one is just a demonstration about the mole, mm -hmm. but I think we're gonna serving the matcha. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So yeah. This is when you, you thought that induction burner would get hotter. Yeah, we're getting the color over here, so it's gonna be ready really fast. Peanuts really come through in there. Peanuts and the, the peppers. Yeah? And yeah, the peanuts and the peppers really yeah. come through in there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I didn't try it. I need to. You got a little spoon right there, man. Let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, 
You guys have any questions about these uh, three different reasons that these peanuts can be uh, seen and on this planet Earth? Yes. the seeds from the, uh, any of the peppers? No, I use them. I mean, if you want a less spicier salsa, yeah, you can take them out. But I personally like spicy, so, yeah. I use them. And, like, I mean, for people that, there's some people that they cannot eat, uh, like, the seeds and other stuff, I, I will remove them. But, like, usually you use them. It's flavored, there, so, yeah, I use them. Like, even for my moles, I always keep the seeds. The only thing that I take out of the chiles is the stem, but that's it. Yeah, this is almost ready. So. So after we get this all blended, so we'll simmer with the pork fat for about 15 minutes. The studio gods are telling us that's a good there time go. to wrap this thing up. But it really smells good. All right, so I'm heat, I'm uh, heating the the pot, and I added a little bit of uh, pork lard. So I'm gonna let it get hot. So what? <clears throat> so what I want is like hear the the pot crying. That's how we call it in Mexico. So I want to I want this to <clears throat> start to make the shh that we want. So que chille. Okay. So this is going fast. Right to the rim. There you go. This is ready. Ladies and 
gentlemen. So this is the pipio. I don't know. I was going to just say this is a good place to get ready for the next show. <laughs> and uh, we just saw three regions where the peanuts are being used uh, three different ways. I mean, in, in Mexico, more. we use a lot of peanuts. Like, we, we have the mazapan. I don't know if uh -huh. you... like. They, they say, like, if you open a mazapan without break it, you can take my heart. So. Oh. I need to take a trip. Oh. Yes, yeah, so practically this is a pipián. We have to let it uh, boil, and that's it. Thank you. Yes, you, check, check. You do have to add the salt, yes. Yeah. All right, season as Remember, yeah, exactly. It looks amazing. So uh, thank you, everyone.